pray together as the gates of the city swung open to welcome the humble king. O oh God, so may our hearts be open to Christ's spirit among us. As Christ wept for the people, so may we weep for those who suffer at the hands of those who have forgotten how to love. Let our worship today express the joy and sorrow, the laughter and weeping of that first Palm Sunday. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first lesson will be read from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, 1 to 11. As Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, near the towns of Bethphage and Bethany, they came to the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of his disciples on ahead and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. So they went and found a colt tied near a door, outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing, untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and the crowd allowed them to take it. They brought the colt to Jesus, threw their cloaks over the animal, and Jesus got on. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. The people who were in front and those who followed behind were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessing is, is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem, went into the temple, and looked around. And since it was already late in the day, he went out to Bethany with the twelve disciples. Thanks be to God for this reading. Our responsive lesson, the words of Psalm 118, as printed. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God is steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel now say, God is steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The song that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, O Lord, we pray. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord our God has given us light. We call branches the hand. Let us march to the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my Lord, and I will extol you. Amen.
reading also from the book of Philippians chapter 2, 1 to 11. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete, be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Thanks be to God for this reading. Like so many times when we read the Bible, we need to pay attention to the context of a particular passage, or we will miss the point and read it in a way that is quite different from how it was intended. In the case of Holy Week, it is critical to understand the political, social, and religious context of these final days of Jesus' life. First, the Jewish people had been controlled by Rome for almost 100 years. For centuries before that, control of their nation had shifted between powers to their north and to their south. In fact, since the conquest of the Hebrew people at the hands of Babylon 600 years earlier, there had not been many years of real independence. 
The people long for an anointed king to rise up among them and to reestablish the glory days of Israel's distant past. They longed for Rome to be toppled. Some dreamed of God accomplishing this through an apocalyptic massacre. Others were more pragmatic, if no less idealistic, and plotted revolution. Second, and for many Jews of Jesus' day, even more troubling, the Jewish leaders of the time were deeply involved in the Roman oppression of their people. In particular, the high priesthood of the temple, once the most sacred institution in all of Israel, had been co-opted as agents of Rome. Given a small share of power and security, the temple leadership was not interested in seeing the status quo change. They were not about to let anyone or anything disrupt the delicate balance that they had achieved. This is the context of Jesus last week in Jerusalem. This is the setting of the unfolding drama that would end in Jesus' death on the cross. This is the Jerusalem into which Jesus rode on the back of a donkey. According to the story, Jesus and his disciples arrived at the Mount of Olives on the east side of Jerusalem. It was Passover week, the holiest festival for the Jewish people. Thousands of Jews crowded into Jerusalem with their sacred story of liberation from oppression and slavery in Egypt, foremost in their minds. It was standard practice for the Roman governor to move from his palace in Caesarea to Jerusalem, bringing with him a military contingent. The Romans wanted to squash any idea that the people could or should be liberated again, this time from Rome. To underscore the point, Rome staged an imperial parade to display their military and political power. This parade was led by Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. We can be sure he was riding a massive war horse, surrounded by instruments of war, accompanied by patriotic anthems and war songs. His procession was meant to intimidate, to strike fear into the hearts of an oppressed people. Both the sights and the sounds of Pilate's parade were meant to serve as reminders of just who had control over the people's lives and their deaths. There was a second parade in Jerusalem that day, a parade led by Jesus of Nazareth, coming from the other side of the city. Jesus was not riding a war horse, but a young colt. Jesus' group was not composed of a finely organized column of foot soldiers and cavalry, but an unorganized group of men and women walking alongside him, who cut leafy branches from the fields and laid them out, shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us now. We do not know how many people witnessed Jesus' procession into the city, but everyone who heard about it would have known exactly what he meant by it. The powers that be were being challenged. Both processions that day proclaimed the power of a king and a kingdom. One was the empire of Rome, and the other, a new proclamation of an alternative vision of power for the world. A kingdom ruled according to the one just and loving God. A kingdom that the 
begins with the underdogs and the outcast, a kingdom that proclaims peace, where words of forgiveness are uttered, where the first become last, and the last become first. Jesus rode into the city to announce his vision, where all are children of God, and where peace would be achieved through justice rather than military might. Friends, you and I cannot hear the story of Palm Sunday without asking where we, his followers, are today. Whose parade will we choose? Will we choose the parade of the king who entered the holy city on a colt, not a war horse? Will we choose the parade of a king who resisted the love of power, but embodied the power of love? One who consistently chose justice and mercy for all people, no matter the cost? Or will we choose the parade that celebrates the way things already are in our world, the parade that dismisses the power of love as naive and foolish, and prizes the love of power, where anger gets a microphone, insults are the primary language, and violence is encouraged. Jesus confronted the powers of his day, political and religious, with a radical alternative. From the beginning of his ministry, he made it clear that he came to proclaim the emergence of God's new reign and to demonstrate what it looks like in the life of a person fully committed to the love of God and the love of others. By his words and actions, Jesus exposed the powers of the world for the corrupt and dehumanizing forces that they are. He accepted the mantle of king in such a way that he redefined everything that this world, his world and ours had come to understand. Jesus came to show the way of God's steadfast love. He came to demonstrate what it means to love God and to love neighbor as self, to love even one's fiercest enemy. Friends, this is a week that will surely challenge us. Jesus challenges our minds and hearts to embrace the profound message he lived and shared. May you and I choose to be part of the reign of Christ that one day we may all sing Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna forevermore. Thanks be to God. Amen.
we too may draw closer to you and find your way. Jesus entered Jerusalem with peace in his heart. May he be our vision that we too may desire peace where others desire war. And may work for justice where injustice reigns. And now in silence we bring to you our most intimate concerns. Loving God, as we follow the path Jesus led, teach us the way of service that we might grow ever closer to you and feel your living presence. Heal us, transform us, renew us, draw us closer to you in this journey of holy week, empower us with strength and with the assurance that you are with us always. We ask these things in the name of Christ Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our concluding hymn, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty.
Good morning, and welcome to First Baptist Church online Sunday school class. Today on Palm Sunday, when we celebrate Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey, and the crowds shouting Hosanna and waving palm branches. And we're going to do so through scripture, through prayer, and through a story. But let us begin with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The story of the first Palm Sunday is found in all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Today, I'm going to read Matthew's version, and it's found in the 21st chapter. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with a colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Amen. The story that I want to share with you is a story that is based upon this particular story. It's a story about Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, but I want us to interact. I want you to be a part of the parade. I want you to respond with a shout of the crowds, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Let's say it together. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And you'll know when to say it with me, because I will say, shout. One Sunday, Jesus instructed some of his disciples to borrow a donkey. When they found the donkey, the owner said, what are you doing? Why are you untying my donkey? The disciples replied as Jesus had instructed them, because Jesus needs to borrow it. And the owner let them take the donkey away. After his disciples threw a few coats on the donkey's back, Jesus sat on it and began to ride. And as he did, all the people around shouted, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Can you hear them? What did they say? Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus rode the donkey down the long hill from the Mount of Olives and into the valley below Jerusalem. And all the while the people shouted, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The people took off their coats and laid them in the path for the donkey to walk on, just like how people today roll out a red carpet for important visitors. And all the while the people shouted, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Next, many of the people cut palm branches from the trees and waved them in the air. And they continued to shout, 
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus rode the donkey up the hill and right into the city of Jerusalem. And all the while, the people waved palm branches and shouted, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Some of the leaders were upset by all the noise and activity, but still the people waved palm branches and shouted, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Even if these people were to be silent, Jesus said, God could make the stones shout. But there was no worry about that because the people would not be silent. They continued to wave palm branches and shouted with all their might, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. And blessed indeed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ. And we are blessed by Jesus. We are blessed through Jesus in knowing God's love for us. We are blessed by Jesus in knowing God forgives us when we do wrong and hurt ourselves and hurt others. And we are blessed because Jesus taught us how to live with one another, how to do unto others as we would want them to do unto us. So on this Palm Sunday, you and I shout with the crowd, Blessed is the one who came in the name of the Lord, for blessed are we. Let us pray. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are we, God. Hosanna to you. We praise you, loving God, for sending us your Son, Jesus Christ, to show us your love and to help us live as your children in the world. Praise God. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Friends, wherever you go, God is there. So whatever happens, you are not alone. Amen. Until the next time, bye for now.